What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jordan and today is an exciting day because we're finally getting around to fabricating a stainless steel exhaust on the Datsun 280Z. And this is a project that I've been looking forward to for a really long time. And believe it or not, I spent over a thousand dollars in just raw materials. So stick around because it's going to be good. And so to get started, I wanna talk about all the different things that I bought for this project, because frankly, there's a lot to go over. We got plenty of straight tubes, UJ bins in different sizes. I actually have some more there. Um, we have our resonators, the collectors, V-bands, a bellow, and all of that stuff is from JMD Tubes. And JMD Tubes is a really great supplier for this kinds of stuff. Um, their, their prices are pretty good and the quality is really nice. Also got some purge plugs from TIG Aesthetics some exhaust hangers and insulators from Summit Racing. And really, this is a lot of stuff for just a simple set of pipes for the exhaust. But all this together, especially in this time, this day and age, cost me over a thousand bucks. So this is a big commitment and I'm excited for the project, but fingers crossed that it goes well because I don't wanna ruin all this great material. Next, I wanna talk about a few of the key tools that I have for this project. Obviously, I have a TIG welder from Prime Weld. This one is a really good unit that's actually not that expensive. You're gonna need a big argon tank for stainless work and a dual flow meter, so that way you can do back purging as well as welding. A good welding mask is definitely a good thing. Then some obvious ones, like some jack stands. Your jack. This is gonna be a belt sander. This is really good for making sure that the cuts of your tubes line up really, really nicely because you, you can grind them flat and make sure the mating surfaces are great for a clean weld. And then I do all my cutting with a bandsaw. This is definitely optional, but I think this, if you're gonna do really high quality work, a bandsaw is absolutely gonna be necessary for cutting your tubes. This one goes vertically as well as horizontal. So overall, some of the key tools that you need but I think the next step is gonna be raising up the car and getting started. Man, it has been a long, long time since I put the car up in jack stands and needless to say, it is always a little bit scary. So next step is gonna be removing the old exhaust. The old exhaust is a twice pipe system. And the new system is actually gonna be kind of like a recreation and more aggressive version of this just cause I love the way it sounds. I love the way it looks. So I just wanna take it up a notch. So let's get under the car and take off the old exhaust. So it had been a while since I'd been under here. So I just did a once over to reintroduce myself where all the mounting points are. There's one here, one right there, and then one right here. So I'm just gonna undo all of those and literally just yank it out. And uh, let's see how that goes. All right, so now that we have the old exhaust out, I wanna talk about the plan for the new exhaust. So we have a collector at the front, just like before. Then we have this bellow here, which is meant for flexibility and uh, heat expansion. Then a V-band and a straight pipe. I want the V-band here and over there, so that if I need to put a catalytic converter in later, I can do that. But for now, it's gonna be straight piped all the way down to another um, separation, make a right, go back up to the new resonators and the exhaust tips. So the exhaust tips on the new exhaust are gonna be 2.75 inches, which is a little bit bigger than these ones. And overall, the exhaust system is a little bit uh, bigger diameter than what I had before. So this is two and a half all the way through. 
And originally I got the twice pipes because I was like, oh cool, it's got two pipes that separate the exhaust pulses, but in reality, it never really did. And it just went to one collector anyway, so I'm like, okay, straight pipe is gonna be fine. They sound very similar. Um, but yeah, so this is the plan and this is what we got to work with. So let's get into it. So I quickly realized that the collector wasn't gonna slip on to this super easily because they don't, they're not close enough. They just need to be a little bit closer. So I ran down to AutoZone and I got this, uh, this vice grip thing, which is pretty sweet. And I think that's gonna help me do the trick just to pull these together just a little bit so that I can slip on the new collector. So even though welding up your own exhaust is a pretty challenging project in itself, it really can't be easier than on the Datsun. So once you get through the collector, we add our bellow and some other things, it's really, really close to just a straight shoot all the way to the back there. So I'm optimistic that once we get this part done up here, it's really gonna be uh, easy until we get to the back of the car. All right, so before we tack weld these up, I'm gonna go ahead and clean all the insides with acetone, because once we tack it, it's gonna be super, super hard to clean the inside of the tubes. Luckily, these come really clean if you get these from just like any old steel shop or steel mill. Uh, they might not be super clean on the inside. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some acetone on a rag and get to cleaning. So off camera, I went ahead and took off the collector and got it tacked on there. So looking pretty good. And next we're gonna be doing this straight section, which should be fairly easy. I just need to tack on the V-band, do the straight section and figure out what I'm gonna do with the back end and where I'm gonna put the V-band on the back end. But yeah, so coming along little by little. I am exhausted though, so uh, need a little break.
And so after getting the straight mocked up, I used some zip ties to kind of hang it up temporarily for me. And then I did some fancy zip tie work to get the collector in place the way that I want it, which is just right below the cross member there and um, kind of twist it a little bit. But um, I don't think I'm gonna have enough space to make that connection between the straight and the connector just based on how much space there is. So I think I'm gonna have to take a couple inches off of the straight and then we'll have to do a little S to make our way to the collector. So, wish me luck, let's get started on that. Now that we've gotten that shortened, it's given us a little bit more room and it's kind of hard to get on camera, but I'm going to try my best. Here is the spread that we're trying to work with. So basically we need to make, we can take a turn here and take a turn here and made it up to this collector. And so that's the puzzle that I'm going to be solving now. And for this project, I decided to get UJ bends um, because they give you a lot of flexibility for making different shapes. So I just went under the car and tested this and it looks like with whatever's left with this 45 and then the 45 degree bend that's in the UJ bend, I can trim this up and it will bridge the gap between uh, the center section and the collector pretty well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna chop this off right after the 45, go test fit again, and then we're gonna have to adjust the length of this to make sure that they made up well. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. Pro amateur tip, I made my mark for my fit up and I was a little conservative on the mark because you can't put material back once you take too much away. So always be conservative with your marks, cut, and then if you need to trim down more, you can always do that later. Before I go ahead and tack these up, I wanna show you guys my marks. Because one thing that, you know, when I was learning, I was like, how do you know where to put your tacks? So when you're mocking it up on the car, use a Sharpie, make a line. You can do one line, but actually two lines or two dots is better because it helps you with like aligning the rotation. Because if you just have one, it could be like off a little bit or whatever. So having two definitely helps you get it in the exact right place that you want. Uh, yeah, so just a little tip there. So unfortunately, after tacking it up and putting it on the car, the collector is a little too close to the diff mount. And so we're gonna need to make some adjustments. And the way that I'm gonna do that is basically I am going to release the tacks and then uh, grind down this edge right here, which is going to angle down the collector a little bit and give us just that little bit of extra space that we need. Unfortunately, we gotta do double work, but you know, it happens. All right, there we go. So little adjustment gave us just the clearance we need. And then I also did a little bit of shaving on the diff cover. You can see on the right side, it has a, uh, an extra point. And then on the left side, I kind of rounded it over. So, you know, a little extra clearance, but I'm definitely happy with that fitment. And uh, yeah, it's looking good. Now that we've completed the transition to the collector in the back of the car, now we're ready to start working on the intricate part of the backside. And if you look at the old exhaust, I'm just gonna use that as an example, we go 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and then out the back, right? So that's another reason why I decided to use the UJ bends for this design because this is 180 degrees, right? So we can just do, cut this off, cut this right here, and you have a 90 and a 90. So there's our 90, there's our 90. I've got two of these 
and that's how we're gonna do the back half of the car. So I'm gonna go get to cutting and let's see how it goes. All right, so here we are under the car with our freshly cut 90 degree. And you would think that you would just take this, put it here, weld it, and carry on, right? Well, this is actually a slip fit. And what's hard about slip fits is you can't really weld directly to them because once you get to this middle part, it's so tight that it's nearly impossible to get a good seal. So I'm gonna measure the depth of the slip fit. And I'm actually gonna take that from this side and I'm gonna try and utilize the entirety of that slip fit and then we'll just do a little bit of welding around it. That way you're gonna get a good seal and it'll work just like the other way. And just like that, we're back. And the second one. Another one. But before we continue on with that part of the exhaust, we need to figure out the finish line. Where is the exhaust gonna end? And that has to do with the resonators. And because the resonators are a key part of this exhaust, we really need to figure out where they're gonna go and then we'll run the pipes to the back of them. And one thing that I really liked about the previous twice pipe design is that the resonators would show a little bit down here. They're almost like an accessory to the car that's not just on the backside. Um, and then the resonators would stop right at the edge of the bumper and then the tips would shoot up. And I really like that design. So I wanna continue with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zip tie the resonators in the car, get them finally placed, and then we can finish running the rest of the tubes. And so now that these are thoroughly zip tied, I have a lot of freedom to hang them up in the car and really get that placement dialed in. All right, so after a bunch of fiddling with the zip ties, um, it was kind of hard because the, the tips weren't staying level and I realized that I had a jack. So I would say just use both because it was really nice to use the zip ties to get it to like a really good place in the front. Um, but then I started fiddling with the, the placement and I think I've settled on this. And so no, it's still gonna have um, some exhaust tips on there that are gonna be very similar to the original design. Um, so it's gonna stick out a little bit, but I think this is gonna give us a nice side profile and I'm really stoked on how it's coming out. Now that the resonators are roughly in place, I've gotten under the car and I've utilized our 90 degree bend that we already made. Then I cut another 90 degree bend and it looks like we're just a few inches shy of that first resonator. So I'm gonna add whatever distance, I'm gonna try and measure it and. Uh, to this section and then I'll tack it up and then we'll get this first resonator on the left sorted and then after that we'll try and organize the the right one all right guys so it is several hours later and I've done a lot of work but it was hard work in general so I didn't really film it but I'm gonna give you guys a little recap of what I just did both of the tubes that connect from the collector have made it to the resonators and that is looking super super good I'm really stoked on that so basically what I did first, they did the, the 90 degree one right here into another 90 into the first resonator. And that one was pretty simple. All I had to do was just extend this one a little bit, make the turn and then do another little straight to meet the resonator. But then after that, um, the, the second one was a little more complicated, just like I thought it would because we did the 90 degree here. But then because we have the 90 degree here, we need to do a 45 and a 45 to do a little bit more of a gradual bend out to the outside. And that also helped us avoid the tire a little bit, which is good. Um, but it's all tacked up and ready to go. And I'm also really excited about the rear. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I'm also really excited about the rear profile because you can see the tubes um, from the back of the car, which I think is gonna be really cool. I definitely wanted to have that happen. So um, the install turned out really, really clean and I'm really stoked on it. So 
Um, final thing that we're going to do is we're going to detach it from there and we're going to tack on the resonators and keep on moving on. So stay tuned. So before we get started, I was A, admiring this, which I'm just like super excited about how it turned out. But also I want to show you how important all these markings are because without the markings, you'll never be able to recreate this on the bench. So just make sure that when you're doing it, always making marks wherever you're working. And if you do that, you'll increase your chances of having, you know, a really solid piece. So let's get to tacking. Guys, look at it. Absolutely beautiful. Let's just hope it fits after I've been fucking with it for the last 30 minutes. <laughs> All right, here goes. Guys, I can't believe it fits. Oh my God. Look at that. Dude, yes. Yes. So you may be wondering how I'm going to find the measurements for my exhaust tips. And I wanted to use the old exhaust as a model. So I'm gonna take my, ang my angle finder here and I'm gonna put it on top of the resonator and the exhaust tip. And with that, we get about 10 degrees of bend. So I'm gonna replicate that 10 degrees of upward bend And the exhaust tip is about seven and a half inches at its longest point. So let's just take that up a little bit to eight, just to be a little bit more aggressive. And then we gotta figure out what type of slant did they do for the cut. And it looks like they did, let's see, it's like 140 minus 40. So they did about a 45 degree cut. So 45 degree cut, eight inches long, 10 degree upward bend. So we got our numbers and let's cut some material. So our exhaust tips have been cut and they are looking really good and don't worry they'll be polished to a mirror finish eventually but here they are right now and I was gonna go put them I was gonna tack them on uh, but then I realized that after test or mocking it up that I really can't get much angle pointed upwards and I measured it it's about five degrees which is not really enough I want it to be somewhere like that Some, something similar to that so um, I'm realizing that the bottom part of the exit of the resonator is kind of getting in the way. And luckily there's no tack welds on the bottom here holding in the mesh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this finished product and I'm gonna grind this down a little bit, maybe maybe just like, just like a corner there. And that should give us the clearance to be able to mock up and tack our exhaust tips. So uh, I'm gonna do that real quick and we'll see if we can make it work. So once again, I have gotten out the zip ties to do a little jig for the exhaust tips. I also have some magnets uh, underneath holding and I also have a magnet in the middle. And the magnet in the middle is more or less to keep the two pipes straight. And that way when we weld it, we know that the exhaust tips are gonna look straight and that's gonna be really good. But I did measure it with the angle thing and we're right at about 10 here. And I need to scoot this one up a little bit, but I think it's gonna turn out really nice. So let's get to tack welding. All 
right guys, I just got it put on the car and it is looking so sick, so check it out. Well guys, as you can see, the exhaust is looking super, super sick and it's looking exactly the way I imagined it. Um, I spent a ton of time thinking about this project and what I was gonna do and um, I'm, I'm super excited that it's just turning out exactly the way I wanted it to. And we still have some stuff to do. We still have to put hangers on the exhaust and the hangers that I got previously, I don't think those are gonna be good enough for this project. I think I'm gonna have to rethink that and get some new hangers, uh, ones that are gonna be a little bit more sturdy because we don't have a lot of clearance, but you know, that's the way I wanted it. I wanted it to fit, fit really nice. Um, but aside from that, we have to polish the exhaust all the way around so it's super finished and the welding goes really, really nice. And then after that, we have to weld it all the way. So there's still some things to do and uh, I'm gonna have to do that another day. I've literally been in the garage every single day for the last four days for, for a whole three day weekend plus Monday today. And uh, yeah, so I know this video is only gonna be like 20 minutes, but I've been in here a lot. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. If you did, hit that thumbs up for me. If you've seen a couple of my videos and you wanna see more, subscribe to the channel. And uh, otherwise guys, we'll catch you next time. Later.